How many of us today know that God wants to do something powerful in your life? Many of us believe that we have lost so much over the years, and sometimes we don't even want to talk about it. We have lost family, we have lost friends, we have lost careers, we have lost in our finances, and even in our relationships. But God calls us to a place where he can speak to us and bring us out higher as long as we put our trust in him. Too many times we focus on the things around us, the things that other people are doing. We try to measure up with our peers, with our co-workers, with our family members and even our neighbors. But what does God call us to do? Our work, the work God asks of each believer, is simply to believe. We are accepted because of our faith, not our good works, not how much money we have or even how we treat people. Christians are referred to as believers. If our job was to achieve, we would be called achievers. Many times we try to focus on the things that we should do instead of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. God loves us and accepts us unconditionally and he wants to restore everything that you have lost. If you have been struggling, if you have been praying, if you have been believing God for something and you are not yet seeing what you are trusting him for, I invite you to elevate your faith with me right now and type below in the comment section, Lord, I will stand in faith today and believe that you will restore everything that I have lost. Then I want you to click on the like button as we all stand in agreement together. The Lord wants to do so much for us, but sometimes we need to get out of our own way. God loves us and he accepts us unconditionally. He does not want a perfect person. That's why he didn't create a perfect person. His love is not based on our performance. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 and verse 6 that we are made acceptable in the beloved it was through the sacrifice of jesus that we were made acceptable not because we achieved acceptance not because you graduated with a wonderful degree not because you go to church every sunday god loves us no matter what but it is our faith in jesus that makes us acceptable to god and please him not our performance psalm 34 and verse 19 says many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous, but the Lord rescues him from them all. What does this say to us today? As we prepare to get into our prayer, I want us to remember that the Lord is not looking to reward you based on your good works. In scripture, Ruth was a young woman when her husband suddenly passed away. Do you know what happened to her? Her whole life was turned upside down with that heartache and that pain. It didn't seem as though God had good plans for her. Some of us are feeling this way even right now as I speak. But being a believer does not exempt us from great disappointments and great hardships. We will all go through our struggles even if we pray every day and we are trusting and believing God. There will be unfair things that we do not understand, things that cause us pain, things that hurt us, friends that we thought we could trust. There will be things that we believe that we should get, and we see persons who cheat their way get it before us. But this is where you have to trust that God is still in control. If you are patient and do not get bitter, God will give you beauty for ashes. Some of us are struggling with the bills right now. We have been praying, we have been trying, and we have been trusting God. But the Lord understands your prayer and he has something good in store for you. You have lost a lot over the years. You have lost friends, family, finances, jobs, even relationships, and things that you have tried to accumulate. Sometimes it doesn't work out the way you predicted it. In the Bible, Ruth also had this happen to her. In those times, the man was the provider for the most part. And so it is today that many of us have bills and expenses that we need jobs or revenue to take care of. 
But my friends, look at what happened to Ruth in the Bible. She lost her husband at a young age. And then she went out in the fields each morning to pick up leftover wheat just so she could survive. One day, the landowner, a man named Boaz, noticed Ruth. Long story short, they ended up falling in love. They ended up getting married and they even ended up having a little baby boy named Obed. So holding her baby, Ruth never imagined that she would be that happy. She never imagined that she would be fulfilled. She did not have to work in the fields anymore because now she owned the fields. God is showing us the same message today. You may be struggling and wondering why did that person die? Why did I lose that job? Why are things closing in on me and they are not closing in on other people? What did I do to deserve this? These are questions that you may be asking yourself, but the Lord wants you to know that He is able to take you from the bottom all the way to the top, just like Ruth, who thought that she would have to continue to go out into the field each morning to pick up leftover wheat just so she could survive. The truth is that none of us listening to this message today have to go outside and pick up leftover wheat from a field just so we can have something to eat. So I want you to think about your circumstances right now. You can see easily that regardless of how bad it is, there are persons who had it worse and even have it worse right now. Do not beat yourself up. Lift up your hands, open your mouth, and give God thanks for life. He woke you up this morning. You have an internet connection that you can listen to this message. You have a mobile device where you can have in your hand and listen to this devotional online. You can tune into prayers online. You can speak to people. You are awake and you have life in your body. You can see, you can hear, you can walk. Many people did not wake up with that privilege. The truth is that God is able to restore everything that you have lost and whatever you think were wasted years. But the Lord has a plan for you and for everyone who is listening to this message. We often will encounter different seasons, whether it is a season of loss, of regret, of missed opportunity, or even disappointment. Sometimes our moments can slip away, our dreams can fade, and time can seem to slip through our fingers. Yet it is in these times that God can transform our wasted years into moments of beauty and purpose. Do you know what wasted years are? Wasted years are not merely the passage of time. They are seasons marked for unfulfilled potential, shattered dreams, and even consequences of poor choices. Sometimes we will feel as though we did nothing and we are just being punished. That is how some of us feel today. But whether through your own actions or circumstances beyond our control, we can find ourselves in a place where we are longing for what could have been. These wasted years weigh heavily on our hearts sometimes, especially when we wake up in the morning and we wonder what this day will bring. It can cast a shadow over our present and dim our hopes for the future. But friends, the Lord wants you to know that He is able to keep you from falling and He will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So before we can experience the fullness of God's restoration, the first thing we must do is acknowledge that our brokenness is there. We cannot hide our pain and pretend that everything is fine. Instead, we must come before God with humility. We must lay bare all our regrets, all our mistakes, and all our disappointments. Some of us sometimes have too much pride. We come to God and we want to push our chest out and act as if we don't need Him that much, but we would love for Him to do this for us or do that for us. He sees the things in your heart that you don't want anyone else to see. It doesn't matter if you already have money and have things going for you. Your health can slip away tomorrow and then you will be on your back wondering, how can God allow this to happen to me when I have done so much good 
and I have helped so many people. Friends, in the midst of our despair, God offers us hope through his promises. In Joel 2 verses 25 to 26, we read, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. So this promise of restoration is not dependent on our merit or our worthiness, but it is a reflection of God's unfailing love and his mercy toward his children. For each person listening to my voice today, you know the thing that you are praying for. Whether it is a school fee for your child, whether you need money for a house, God is not too small to do it. God can allow you to have a million dollars before the end of the week out of nowhere. That is the God that you serve. But the truth is that while we may long for immediate restoration, God often works according to his own timing. And we will never know the timing of God if we do not develop a relationship with God to hear what he has to say. God often works according to his own timing, which may not align with your expectations. In Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9, we are reminded, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So trusting in God's timing, my friends, requires patience, it requires faith, and it requires a willingness to surrender our desires to his perfect will. So if you woke up early in the morning and you are listening to this devotional, I want you to remember that if you put God first, he will restore everything that you have lost. God's restoration is not merely a one-time event, but a continuous process of renewal and transformation. So as we surrender our brokenness to him, he begins to work in our lives and redeem our past while he shapes our future. So that husband that you want, that wife that you want, that child that you want, that home, that land, that business, it's not too big for him. It's just that he's not going to give you them to show off just because you need them now. If you see your neighbor buy a brand new Benz tomorrow morning, you may feel as though why is that happening for them and not for you. You may not be grudgeful, but you may feel left out. You may feel as though, when is my time? When is my season? And these things can get to you if you start to focus on why you want these things to be something to show off with, something to say, see something is happening for me. If you are operating without following in God's direction and his timing, then you will not receive these blessings because you are not walking in the will of God. One of the biggest obstacles to experiencing God's restoration is the burden of regret. We often cling to the past mistakes that we have made and sometimes we will allow them to define us or hinder our progress. However, God calls us to release our regrets and embrace his forgiveness. In Philippians 3 verses 13 and 14, the Apostle Paul writes, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. So friends, we have to let go of regret. We have messed up in the past and the truth is that we may mess up again in the future. These things do not define what God wants to do for you and they not define who you are in God's sight. Letting go of regret allows us to move forward in faith. It allows us to move confidently that God is redeeming our wasted years for his glory. One of the biggest things we have to remember is God's abundant grace. Despite our failures, despite our shortcomings, despite the things that we know we have messed up with in the past and we cannot even tell our spouse, our friends or even our family, 
God extends his grace to us freely, offering forgiveness, redemption, and renewal. In Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9, we are also reminded, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that none of you may boast. So God's grace is sufficient to cover our past, and it is enough to empower us to live victoriously in the present and in the future. So as we journey towards restoration, and as we prepare to pray this powerful prayer with you today, I want all of us to choose to walk in faith, regardless of what is not working, regardless of what seems as though you are being left out. Trust that God is faithful to fulfill his promises. Hebrews 11 and verse 1 tells us, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So even when your world comes crashing down, even if your spouse leaves you, even if your spouse dies, even if life takes a turn and you lose your job or something does not work out the way you would have expected it, friends, we can cling to the hope that God is still working behind the scenes, orchestrating his perfect plan for our lives. So finally, as we experience God's restoration in our lives, we are called to do one thing, celebrate his faithfulness and his goodness. Psalm 126 and verse 3 declares, The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. So our testimony of God's faithfulness serves as a beacon of hope to others who may be walking through their fire right now. They are struggling and they are going through their pain. Let them look to you and wonder what did you do to overcome? How did you get from being on the floor to being on top? How did you get from walking to driving, from renting to owning, from being poor to being rich, from being sick to being healthy? Friends, as we share our stories of restoration, let us point others to the God who is able to redeem even the most wasted years and restore everything to a point where you cannot believe you are the one walking in favor. You are the one driving that car. You are the one married to this person. This is your bank account. This is your home. This is you being healed. This is you traveling. This is the God that we serve and there is nothing that is too big for him. When we seek God first every morning, we shut down the enemy's plans for our day. We shut down potential accidents. We shut down things that may want to come against us at work, in our families, in our day-to-day -day business. Our wasted years are not lost forever, but are transformed into moments of beauty and purpose when we put God first. So friends, as we pray this prayer, through humility, faith, and surrender, we can experience the fullness of God's restoration in our lives. And as we embrace his promises, let us trust in his timing. Let us walk in faith and let us be transformed from vessels of brokenness to vessels of honor, reflecting the glory of our faithful and loving God, regardless of our situations in our lives. Now, as we pray, I want each person, if you have not yet subscribed, to please click on that subscribe button and also click on the notification bell. And if you feel blessed in your heart, if you feel led in your spirit to donate to our ministry or support us in creating these devotionals and prayers for you each day, please click on the first link in the description below and please donate what your heart tells you to donate. Today we are going to pray for everyone who has lost something and we are going to believe God together right until the end of this prayer for everyone who is struggling and needs a breakthrough today. They need that breakthrough this week. They need a touch from God right now and they want to see him show up mightily and everyone will know that that is the move of God in your life. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today 
with hearts heavy with the weight of things that we have lost and moments where we feel as though we have missed out. Lord, some of the listeners today feel broken in their hearts. Some of them feel as though they have lost out on dreams, they have missed opportunities, and they feel as though there is no turning back for them. Lord, today I ask you to intervene in their lives. You see their issues and you see their challenges today. You know the depths of our struggles, the pain of our regrets, and the longing for restoration that burns within each person today. Today we cry out to you, O God, knowing that you are the only one who can redeem our past and usher in a season of new blessings and breakthroughs. Lord, we confess our sins today. We confess our mistakes and we confess our failures before you. We acknowledge that we have fallen short of your glory many times, that we have wandered away from your perfect plan for our lives. Lord, forgive us. Cleanse us from our sins and show us the way, Father God, that we can connect with you and see things turn around for us in a way that we couldn't even believe before. Lord, wash away our guilt and shame and help us to walk in the freedom and grace that you have provided through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, we ask that you will show up in our lives in a powerful way that you would reveal your presence and your power in the midst of our brokenness. You see each issue that each person is facing today. Some of us have been abused. Some of us are struggling with trauma. Some of us are struggling in our finances, in our health, in our careers, in our jobs, even in our families and even in our homes. But today, O oh Lord, you are the God of restoration, the one who makes all things new. And today we believe in your promise to restore the years that the locusts have eaten, to bring beauty from ashes and to turn mourning into dancing. Take our pain, take our struggles and our sorrows and transform them into moments of grace, mercy and redemption today. Replace our despair with hope our sorrow with joy and our weakness with strength today. Let your light shine into the darkest corners of our hearts. Light the path of restoration, Father God, that the enemy wants to shut down. We declare and decree that no weapon formed against your people shall prosper. Everyone who is going through a setback and a delay right now, we bind it in the name of Jesus. We lift up each listener that took the time out to listen all the way through the end of this prayer. We ask that you touch them, Father God, and minister to their hearts. Some of us don't know what else to do. This is a new day. We are going into new months and new years in the future. And some of us are worried. Some of us are terrified. Some of us are scared. And Father God, some of us are low in faith. But today, O oh God, we pray for breakthrough in every era of our lives. We declare and decree that you will break the chains that bind us. We declare and decree that the habits that hold us captive will be broken and the fears that paralyze us will go. Pour out your spirit upon us. Fill us with your courage, boldness and faith. Help us to step out in obedience and trust in your goodness and your faithfulness to guide us every step of the way. Lord, we thank you for the new blessings that you are preparing to pour out upon us today. Open our eyes to see your provision, our ears to hear your voice, and our hearts to receive your love. You are the God who gives good gifts to your children, and we eagerly await the abundance of blessings that you have in store for us. Father, we pray for restoration in our relationships, our finances, our health, and every other area of our lives that has been affected by wasted years. Heal the wounds of the past, reconcile broken relationships, and bring reconciliation and peace where there is strife and even division, even in our own homes. Provide for our needs according to your riches in glory, and grant us strength and vitality to serve you wholeheartedly. Lord, as we lift our voices in prayer, you see the comments that your people have left below of the things that they are struggling with or how much they are trusting you for a breakthrough. 
Today we know that you are listening and we thank you for hearing us. We know, Father God, that you are moved with compassion for your children and that you are already at work in ways that we cannot even see. Help us to wait patiently for your timing, to trust in your wisdom and to surrender our will to yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you How many times do you feel as though you are being tested when you have prayed for a miracle? when you are trusting God to open doors and when you are pursuing things but they seem as though they are running away from you. Life can often feel like a series of tests, like we are constantly being tested. We will encounter trials and challenges that stretch us beyond our comfort zones and challenge us in ways that we cannot even imagine. These trials can be uncomfortable. They can be painful and they can even be perplexing. Friends, they can leave us wondering about our purpose and if God even remembers us. But in our journey of faith, we can go through things, we can go through storms and regardless of how difficult it gets, God is still there with us but he will test you, test what you will do, how you will react and the way you will carry yourself when you are put in the middle of a trial. This devotional explores how God uses these tests to prepare us for greater blessings. If you are going through some trials right now and you want to get to the next side of this trial so you can receive your blessings from God, I want you to type in the comment section below. Regardless of the trials I face, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then I ask you to click on the like button below as we stand in agreement together. At the end of this devotional, we will also say a very powerful prayer with you as you go through your storms of life and get to the next end so you can receive your blessings. Make sure to stay with us until the end so we can pray with you and we can all believe God for our breakthrough together. Friends, you may be in a situation today where everybody around you is compromising their integrity or taking the easy way out when life kicks storms your way. Don't go there. Be the one to have an excellent spirit. The Lord is watching what we will do when things do not go our way. Be a cut above and set the highest standard that you can. Give it your all and produce more than is expected. Whether you have little or whether you have much, whether it is old or whether it is new, take pride in what God has given you and take good care of it. Do your job to the best of your ability and live in such a manner that when people see you, they are attracted to your God. Be the best witness you can be and whatever you go through on a daily basis, put God first and he will give you everything you need to overcome the challenges that you experience each day. As we go forth on this day, on the rest of this week, and throughout the rest of this month, let us remember that the challenges that we face sometimes are in line with the things that we are praying for. If we are asking God for more money, he may not just let it fall in your lap, but he will give you additional duties you may just see additional doors, additional tasks, or additional jobs that you can do. The trick is you will see more work. You will see more sacrifice being needed. It can come off as if it is more stress, but you are the one who are asking for more rewards. Sometimes the Lord works like this. You want a cake? The Lord is going to provide the materials, He is going to provide the instructions, and you are going to have to prepare that cake if you really want it. Understanding God's testing is one of the greatest things we can do. The concept of God testing His people is evident throughout Scripture. These challenges are not for God's benefit, as He is all-knowing, but for ours to prepare us to refine our character, to deepen our faith, and to guide us and prepare us for his blessings. 
In James 1 verses 2 to 4, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. One of the most profound examples of God testing his people is found in the story of Abraham. In Genesis 22, God asks Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac, the son of promise. Now this is not something that most of us would ever do, to sacrifice our only child for something that we are believing God for. Now this test is not only a trial of faith, but also a test of obedience and trust in God's plan. Abraham's willingness to obey, even in the face of losing his beloved son, it demonstrates his profound faith. At the moment of testing, God provides a ram as a substitute for Isaac, blessing Abraham for his unwavering faith. So many times the Lord will test if you will really go all the way for him. And just when you think it is going to be too much, he provides a solution for you. He opens that door and he provides that healing, that blessing, that transformation and that promotion that you have been praying for. Now Abraham's test was a precursor to the immense blessing of becoming the father of many nations. This story teaches us that sometimes God requires us to let go of what we hold dear to and receive his greater blessings. Joseph was another example. His life, as detailed in Genesis 37-50, to is another example of how God will test us before he blesses us. Joseph, favored by his father, but despised by his brothers, he faced numerous trials. He was sold into slavery. He was falsely accused, and he was also imprisoned. Throughout these tests, Joseph's character and faith in God are refined. Despite his circumstances, Joseph remains faithful to God, interpreting dreams and offering wise counsel. So ultimately, his steadfastness, his willingness, it led to his rise as the second in command in Egypt, where he saved many from famine, including his own family. Now this story highlights how God can use tests to develop our character and prepare us for significant roles in his plan. His trials were not only personal challenges, but also steps toward a greater purpose and blessing. The story of Job is also an example where he was described as a blameless and upright man, but he faced immense suffering. He lost his wealth, he lost his health, and he even lost his family. Throughout this ordeal, Job grappled with understanding why God allowed such suffering, but remains faithful and he refused to curse God. This is something that we struggle with today. We may be praying about something that is dire to our hearts, something that we have been really believing God for, a challenging medical report, a difficult issue with our finances, we may have trouble on the job or trouble at home, and sometimes when we pray, we may be wondering, God, why is nothing changing? Now God will observe how we respond to the situation that is still ongoing. Friends, it is important that you remain faithful. Do not curse God because you do not get what you want. Allow God to operate. Let him see that you are being faithful despite what the outcome is today, despite how good or bad your day went. Do not let your situation determine if and how you will praise your God. He is God and he deserves the glory. He deserves the worship. He deserves all honor and all praise. In the end, God restored Job's fortune because he was faithful. God gave him twice as much as he had before, and Job's faithfulness, despite the extreme testing, it resulted in greater blessings, underscoring the idea that enduring trials with integrity 
can lead to profound spiritual and material rewards. So friends, when it comes on to our personal lives, we will face storms and challenges that test our trust in God. These could be career setbacks, financial struggles, health issues or relationship problems. Like Abraham, we might be asked to relinquish control over what we cherish the most. Trusting God's plan means believing that he sees the bigger picture and he has our best interests at heart, even when the path is unclear. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6 remind us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. This trust is fundamental in navigating all the challenges that you face in order to receive God's blessings. Tests are opportunities for growth, so whatever you may go through, people may not understand because sometimes that test is just for you. This test may reveal your strength, your weaknesses, and it may shape your character. So like Joseph, we must face unjust circumstances at times and this will test our integrity and our patience. These moments are crucial for developing virtues such as humility, perseverance, and even forgiveness. Romans 5 and verses 3 and 4, it encourages us, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Embracing trials as character building exercises will prepare us for the responsibilities and the blessings that God has in store. I know some of us want some big things to happen for us this year. We have been praying about it, we have been putting in the work, and we have been making the sacrifices. But friends, it is up to us to understand that we will face trials, we will face setbacks, and we will face challenges. But faithfulness in the face of trials is key to unlocking God's blessings. Job's story teaches us that unwavering faith, despite our struggles, can lead to restoration and greater blessings. In our darkest moments, maintaining our faith and integrity, despite not understanding God's reasons, this positions us to receive His grace and His blessings. 1 Peter 1 verses 6 and 7 reminds us, In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So consider reflecting on these questions when you are going through your issues. What current challenges might be tests of your faith, obedience, or your character? How can you trust God more deeply in these areas? What steps can you take to develop godly character through your trials? How can you maintain faithfulness even when you do not understand God's plan and when the trouble is coming and you don't know what to do? Friends, it is important to spend time in prayer, to seek God's guidance, and to seek His strength to endure and grow through all the challenges you face. He has a plan for you. He has good things in store for your future. He is working it out in your favor. And all He wants from us is to seek Him first and His righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto us. Now as we get into our prayer for today, I simply want to ask you to click on that subscribe button and if you have not yet done so, turn the notification bell on. This will ensure you never miss another powerful devotional as we pray with you and we lift you up each day to the Lord together. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, 
today we thank you for your presence and we thank you for your faithfulness in each person's life today you see and you know everything that we are going through you understand all the storms that we face individually and privately regardless of where we are regardless of how much money we have and whatever our past is you know what we are going through and you love us and you promise to be faithful to see us through as long as we put you first lord we acknowledge that the trials and the challenges that we face are opportunities for growth and deeper trust in you lord help us to remember that if we put you first all other things that we seek will be added unto us lord forgive us of our sins cleanse us of all unrighteousness for every time that a challenge has come and we chose to curse get angry or frustrated we ask you for your forgiveness today we simply ask you lord to guide us with your wisdom with your knowledge and your understanding to know that you are on the case and as long as we put you first everything will work out just fine Lord, we ask you to help us to see our tests as pathways to greater things. Grant us the strength to endure, the wisdom to learn, and the faith to trust in your plan, even when it is beyond our understanding. Like Abraham, help us to obey you fully. Like Joseph, may we develop godly character through adversity. And like Job, let our faithfulness shine even in the midst of suffering lord we surrender our worries our fears and our desires to you today and we believe that you are refining us for a greater purpose today we just want to thank you for your promise we thank you for your favor we thank you for your mercy and we thank you for seeing us waking us up to a brand new day and for giving us another opportunity to realize that you are still in charge that you are still in control, that you still love us, and that you have a greater purpose for us. We thank you for your promise to bless and guide us today, and today we choose to trust in your perfect timing and your unfailing love. We rebuke every attack of the enemy today, and we declare favor, we declare peace, we declare wisdom. We declare knowledge and understanding as we rise above all challenges that we face and we overcome all the issues that the enemy wants to use to stop us from trusting in you. We elevate our faith right now and we choose to say thank you for the breakthrough in advance. We thank you for the healing in advance. We thank you for the financial abundance in advance. We thank you for the promotions in our jobs in advance we thank you for turning the page in our business in advance we thank you for making a way where there seems to be no way and today we put you first and we choose to say lord we receive it we thank you for it and we look forward to new things with you by our side in jesus name we pray amen <laughs> we all go through seasons of struggle seasons where we're dealing with an illness the loss of a loved one or something that just did not work out the way we planned it to work out. Sometimes we fail to understand what is happening around us and we feel as though life is just not fair. Most times we tend to think that the suffering, the struggle, the crying, the tears and those secret hardships that we go through will never go away. But sometimes it is not about what we go through, it's what we look to when we go through these things. God never promised that we would not have seasons of weeping or seasons of struggle. But Jesus says in Luke 6 and verse 21, that blessed are those who weep now, for in due time you will laugh. God promises that the suffering is only for a season. The weeping is not how your story ends. You are going to laugh again, my friend. God sees what you're going through. He knows what was not fair and he also sees you in those lonely nights with the heartache, the pain and the tears that you think no one sees. Psalm 56 and verse 8 says, He has collected all my tears in his bottle. You may have felt alone, but he's been right there with you. 
The good news is that he's not going to leave you to suffer. He's not going to leave you broken hearted. He's not going to leave you weighed down and feeling hopeless with all the burdens that you have. 1 Peter verse 5 and 10 says, After you have suffered a little while, notice that he didn't say for your entire life or for the next 20 years. He said, but after a little while. He then goes on to say, God himself will strengthen you. He will establish you and put you back on your feet. You may be in a very uncomfortable season where you may feel as though your struggle is more than you can even bear. Sometimes your health, your marriage, or your finances may feel as though they will never get better. But God himself is about to step in and do what only he can do. When you see how he restores you, how he pays you back for what was unfair, how he brings you out even better, then your mourning is going to be turned into dancing. Your sorrow will be turned into joy. And my friends, your weeping will turn into laughter. So ignore the naysayers. Ignore the tricks that the devil wants to whisper in your ear that you will never make it and you will always be lonely. Think about what the Lord says. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Notice that weeping may endure, which means it is not certain, it's questionable. But here is a promise, that joy is coming, my friends. Regardless of what your situation is, hold on to the word of God. Joy is coming in the morning. The Most High God says that joy is on the way. You are going to laugh again, you're going to dream again, you are going to love again and experience all the things that you think you would never have experienced. So get ready to see God's blessings in such a way that all you can do is laugh. Get ready to laugh in amazement. Get ready to smile in gratitude. Get ready for songs of joy. Get ready for blessings, financial blessings that you have been praying for. Get ready to build that house. Get ready to pay off those loans. Get ready to move on to bigger and better things because the Lord says that joy is coming in the morning regardless of what your current situation may look like. I'm just going to read a quick Psalms for you and then we are going to pray. Psalm 27 is one of the most powerful psalms and promises that we have from the Lord God himself. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me. God, my Savior, though my father and mother may forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for fall witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. 
I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for everything that you have ever done for me. I thank you for every relationship that you have given me, especially for my spouse, especially for the people in my life. Help me to keep the joy and laughter and freshness in our life, in our relationships, and never turn our love on autopilot. Help us to commit to you, Father God, even when our struggle is real. Help us to stand by your word that we will see your glory in the land of the living. Thank you that our seasons of dryness are not permanent seasons. I thank you that you are here with us and you will show us the way to prosperity, to victory, to love, to happiness, to success. We commit our heart and our soul to staying connected to you in the name of Jesus and we come against every plan of the enemy that wants to see us fall, that wants to see us fail, that whispers to us that we will not make it. We declare and decree that no weapon formed against our prosperity shall prosper. We speak miracles in the name of Jesus over every dead situation in our lives. We pray over our family. We pray over our businesses. We pray over our jobs. We pray over our school. We pray over the plans that you have placed on our hearts that sometimes we don't know how to manifest them in the land of the living. We look to you for guidance. We look to you for direction. We look to you for wisdom from heaven to break every barrier that is set over us in whatever field of life that we are placed in. We look to you and we thank you that you are God alone and you alone can elevate us from nothing to something, from the back to the front, from last to first. So we give you our praises, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we thank you and we receive the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ today. We pray that you will manifest in ways that no man can shut down, and you will open doors that no man can shut. We thank you for your presence, we thank you for your miracle, we thank you for hearing us today. People may think that they are getting the best of you, but God sees what is happening. He knows how to pay you back for what should have been yours in the first place. Deceptive people and manipulators are not going to get the best of you. Don't get upset if people leave you out, push you down or don't keep their word. You are not on their payroll, you are on God's payroll. They may have manipulated you, but they cannot manipulate our God. When he is ready to pay you back, all the forces of darkness cannot stop him. When he is ready to bless you, no one can stop that blessing. When he is ready to promote you, not even your boss's boss cannot stop you from getting that promotion. So don't worry about the setbacks. Don't worry about them being deceitful. Don't worry about things not working out, how they should have worked out or how you have worked hard for them to work out. God is going to pay you back even when you don't see it coming. For 20 years, Jacob in the Bible did the right thing and he worked faithfully for his father-in-law Laban. This father-in-law was continuously deceitful, dishonest and manipulative whenever it came on to Jacob. But in the end, God saw the injustice, not because Jacob wasn't praying, he was. He saw the things that were happening just like you. But in the end, God blessed Jacob with a sudden increase in his flocks to amazing abundance. And what was that called? Payback time. So prepare for your payback because it is definitely coming. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day today that we have awakened to see your glory and your miraculous wonder in the earth once again. We all have things that we are not proud of and we ask you to forgive us of our sins today. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness and help us to realize that we have to be grateful even when things are not working in our favor. We thank you for life today. We thank you for your blessings and your mercy on a brand new day. 
to be able to see the sunlight and to be able to hear, to be able to touch and to be able to feel once again. Father, we thank you that you keep the records straight and you have seen every unfairness that we have all experienced and how it has impacted our life. We thank you today that you know how to pay us back. I declare that you are our vindicator and you will make our wrongs right. We thank you that you are able to do what our bosses cannot do. We thank you that our promotion and our finances come from you and no boss can stop whatever you have in store for us. We thank you that you will always make a way when there seems to be no way and when you say yes, nobody can say no. Lord, you are our strong and steady enabler. And we know that you have seen the tough times that we have been facing lately. It is taking a toll on us and regardless of where we are in the earth, we await this miracle to happen. So we ask you to strengthen us. We ask you to open that door that will bless us so others can see your blessing and come to glorify you in heaven. You provide for the birds of the air every morning. You provide for them even when they don't ask, even when they don't know where it is coming from. You provide and you help them to always be fed. So Father Jesus, in the same breath, we know you will provide for us, provide for our families. We ask you today, Father God, to really just continue to make a way for us. Help us not to be ungrateful when we don't see things working out in our time. Help us to remember that you are at the forefront and what you say goes. And when you are ready to promote us, no one can stop it. Father Jesus, we ask you to help us to stay strong and to stay positive. Help us to see the good in every situation. Help us to feel comfort with your promise of an answered prayer. Father, you will fulfill your promises in our life. So we ask you to come through for us and to open up the doors for this miracle that we have been praying for. For those people who have done us wrong, Lord, sometimes they don't know what they have done. And as we continue to trust you, Father God, they will come to know that we are children of the King and favor follows us regardless of what anyone else says or does. Help us to remember to be humble when your blessings, your promises and your miracles come upon us and you begin to pay us back for all that other people had done to us. Help us to remember not to treat them the same way they had treat us. Help us to remember, Father God, that we have a heart of God. Give us the strength to pause and praise and honor you today and each day. As we think on this prayer request for a long time, help us to be patient. Help us to remember that scripture that we should be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication, help us to make our requests known to you. You can accomplish the impossible. You can do the unthinkable. Nothing is too difficult for you. So we ask you to hear us today and see the people who have treated us wrong, the people who have robbed us, the people who have been deceitful, the people who try to hold us back and do not believe in us. God, make this miracle happen. Give us that payback. Restore what was taken from us and help us to know that we can call on you at any time. We thank you for the riches of your grace for your universal understanding, for paying us back even before we see it manifested, for everyone who even tries to do us wrong in the future. Sometimes this is even a family member. Sometimes this is a partner. Today we ask your mercy on them and we ask you to show us how to treat them even when they mistreat us. The human nature will tend to want to lash out. But today, we put everything under your feet in prayer. We know that everything is under your feet and you are the head over all things. We praise you that even though our circumstances seem hopeless, we have hope in you, hope in your miracle and hope in your word. We will not be crushed by these dire circumstances. We are seated with you in heavenly places and look down at this with you and declare that your authority over all these things supersedes 
all. We ask you to put this seemingly hopeless situation under your feet as it indeed already is. We thank you for your immeasurable power that is available to us. We thank you for fighting our battles for us and contending with those who contend with us. O oh Lord, the glory of your power surpasses all thought and all knowledge. And we ask you for a miracle in our workplace. We ask you for a miracle in our relationships. We ask you for a miracle in everything that seems to want to take things and blessings away from us and we put it in your hands right now with your divine power and for your praise and your glory we thank you for the victory we ask that you bring victory to those who are still suffering when the troubles of life come help us to remember that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world we give you thanks and we acknowledge your riches in mercy, grace and kindness. We thank you that we may enter your presence with boldness and confidence. We ask that out of the riches of your glory, that you rescue us, deliver us and promote us with a miracle through your spirit. We give you glory for you are able to do much more than our wildest imaginations according to your power at work in us. Whatever the struggle of your people across the world, under the sound of my voice, I pray that you come through for them today. Some people are listening to this word and sometimes their faith is low and they feel hopeless. But help us to remember that your word tells us that whatever we ask for in prayer, if we believe that we have received it, it will be ours. So Lord, today we believe. Help our unbelief and may our faith prevail over our doubts. Help us to look at this with spiritual eyes rather than physical eyes. The physical man will want to repay evil for evil. But we declare and we decree today that our spiritual eyes be open and that we will see your hand in everything that tries to come against us. We will see it working out for our good. Help us to look at it with these spiritual eyes and stir up the most holy faith in a clear flame of confidence so that we might receive the miracle we need. We might receive the breakthrough. We might receive the healing. We will see your vindication and we will not have to seek revenge out of the fleshly man or out of the physical side. We ask that you have compassion on us and even the people who do us wrong. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, restore us, O God, with your salvation. We ask for a miracle from heaven that we may rejoice in you when we see things start to turn out and even before things happen. Help our faith to push us to worship. Help us to walk in gratitude with our head held high knowing that you are on it and you will restore us lord we praise you and we thank you we look to you and we thank you for your provision regardless of our situations regardless of the people regardless of all circumstances you are still god and that is the message that we must remember that you are god who sits on the throne and shine forth on our behalf even when we don't see it, you are working. And that is what we need to remember, that you are God in the good times as well as in the bad times. So we ask you to look down from heaven and see our plight today. As we pass through our storms today, help us to focus on you and not the wind and the waves. Like Peter, I know that if we keep our eyes on you, we can walk on water. Miracles belong to us and we will rise above this storm. You have given us power over the works of the adversary. So help us not to get distracted from fixing our eyes on you. You are able to bring us through anything and everything. And we thank you for your unspeakable joy. We thank you for your favor today. We thank you for the victory over everything that comes against us. And we declare and decree that today and the next day and the next day will be a great day regardless of what anyone else says it doesn't matter what the report says what our boss says what our family members our neighbors or even strangers may say we only focus on what you say so we thank you for your mercy 
we thank you for your love and we thank you that in all these things we are more than conquerors through you who love us in jesus name we pray amen have you ever started your day without taking a moment to give god thanks for all he has done for you for waking you up this morning for allowing you to see your family again for allowing you to take another breath on this earth and inhale his oxygen into your body let's be honest sometimes we get so caught up in the demands of the day that we forget to take a moment to pause and reflect if you are grateful to be alive today i want you to type in the comment section below lord i pause and give you thanks and praise today for all you have done for me then i want you to take a moment and click on the like button below starting our day with god and a heart full of gratitude can transform our outlook energize our spirit and align our hearts with his divine purpose for our lives today in this devotional we will explore why it is essential to thank god and begin our day in his presence and how when we do this it can bring about profound change in our lives then make sure to stay until the end of this video because i will say a powerful prayer with you to help you to begin with god and to end with his blessings not everyone will be willing to pay the price required to be close to god not willing to simply take the time required and make the investments needed for spiritual growth the lord wants to do something big in each of our lives but god does not ask for all of our time james 4 and verse 8 reminds us come close to god and he will come close to you I believe that we all should take the time to have an intimate relationship with God. We say we don't have time to seek God, but the truth is that we take time to do the things that are most important to us. Even though we all have to fight distractions each day, if knowing God and hearing from Him is important to us, then we will find time to do it. Do not try to work God into your schedule, but instead work your schedule around your time with God. Getting to know God is a long-term investment, so don't get discouraged if you don't get instant results. Be determined to honor Him with your time and you will reap the benefits in your life. Many of us are praying for the Lord to open doors for us, to do things for us, to work a miracle in our favor. But we have to put in the time to have a good relationship with God. We have to put in the time to get to know Him, to hear His voice, to experience His direction, so that He can help us to live a well-balanced life. Some of us want to do more. Some of us want to help other people. Some of us want to experience financial independence so that we can invest in the people who are less fortunate. There was once this very successful businessman. He had all his achievements. One day someone asked him, what were the most valuable moments in his life that brought him the most joy, the most happiness and the most fulfillment? He said, over his 50 plus years in business is that he has been able to use his position wealth and influence to help people the smile on his face told the joyful story of how his company had sown seeds of blessings and made a difference so many lives could be changed some of us have this god-given desire to succeed and to achieve things in life but it all starts when we begin to give god thanks and receive his direction so we can achieve the things that we want when we wake up and give god thanks it is more than just a polite gesture or a momentary feeling of thankfulness it is indeed a powerful spiritual practice that will shift our focus from our problems to god's goodness when we begin our day with gratitude 
we acknowledge God as the source of all blessings and recognize his hand in every aspect of our lives. The Bible repeatedly encourages us to give thanks. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18, Paul writes, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. This verse reminds us that gratitude is not dependent on our circumstances, but it is a conscious choice to see God's grace in every situation. Many of us have been praying for a financial breakthrough. It doesn't make sense to only give God thanks when he answers your prayers. That means you are not praising God for who he is. It means you are not worshipping God because he is your creator, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Friends, let us not focus only on what we can get from God, but what God can get from us. We are all here for a short time. We came here with nothing, and we will leave here with nothing. We are merely passing through, and we have connections that we will make, we have experiences that we will have, and we have things that we all want to do. But the Lord is the one who can guide you along the path that he has prepared for your life. Psalm 100 and verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Recognizing God's authority, it helps us to trust in him more deeply and it helps us to submit to his will so we can know the plans that he has for us. He has our best interests at heart, but he wants us to show him that we appreciate him even before he does things for us. Friends, we need to remember God's faithfulness. Gratitude reminds us of God's faithfulness throughout history and in our personal lives as well. Let us not forget the things he has brought us through in the past. We have prayed prayers while we were growing up, and sometimes we forget that we prayed those prayers and he answered those prayers because we are so focused on the next request that we have for God. We are so focused on the next phase of our lives, the next plans that we have, that we forget to say thank you for saving us that one time, for bringing us through that situation, for helping us to keep our job in that time, for helping our relationship to survive, for helping us to pay those bills. Gratitude reminds us of his faithfulness, and Lamentations 3 verses 22 and 23 declares, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So reflecting on God's past faithfulness, the things he has already brought us through, this will strengthen our faith. This will reassure us of his continued provision and his promises to see us through and open new doors that we have been praying for. It is easy to feel happy and to feel joyful and celebrate when everything is going well. But what do you do when times are tough, when times are hard? Do you blame God and wonder why he has forgotten about you? Do you look to the sky and ask God why is it that he is blessing others and not blessing you? Sometimes we forget that he is the one that is in charge and sometimes he has a plan for us and chooses to allow things to happen so we can remember him. Because many times when things are going well, we do not remember God. Many times the only reason some people even remember to pray or to say thank you Lord for waking me up is when things are not so well, when things are not going too well. Thanking God humbles us. It reminds us that we are dependent on his grace. James 4 and verse 6 states, God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Acknowledging our need for God it fosters humility and it opens our hearts to receive his grace and his guidance. Friends, when we begin our day with gratitude, we set a positive tone for the rest of the day. Philippians 4 verses 8 encourages us to focus on what is true. It encourages us to focus on what is noble, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely and what is admirable. 
gratitude shifts our mindset from negativity to positivity and it allows us to face challenges with a hopeful and resilient spirit if you woke up this morning or if sometimes you wake up and you are in a rush and you do not know how to start the day with god i will share with you just a few tips that you can use to make this much easier the first step is whether it is five minutes or an hour try to dedicate the first part of your day to prayer to bible reading and reflection which sets a spiritual foundation you can even follow these devotionals and prayers on a daily basis so you can listen them while you are in your car traveling to work you can listen them as you are showering you can listen them as you are making breakfast matthew 6 and verse 33 says but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well prioritizing god at the start of your day aligns our priorities with his the second thing you need to do is to begin with a prayer of gratitude before you start to ask god for money for healing or for something that you want to happen with your job or your business thank god for his blessings thank him for his protection thank him for his guidance psalm 143 and verse 8 says let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love for i have put my trust in you show me the way i should go for to you i entrust my life so meditate on his word allow scripture to speak to your heart and to your mind next we need to try and reflect on scripture which helps us to understand god's character and his will for our lives choose a verse or even a passage that you like to meditate on throughout the day psalm 119 and verse 105 says your word is a lamp for my feet and a light to my path so god's word will light your path and provide wisdom and direction here's another one that i like that you can use when you are faced with situations in your day philippians 4 and verse 13 says i can do all things through christ who strengthens me so whatever you may be going through regardless of how difficult it seems always remember that on your own you may fail but if you remember god you can do all things through him as he will give you strength then you need to ensure to make a habit of listing things that you are grateful for sometimes we forget the things that we want to give god thanks for we don't have to give thanks for big things if you are alive if you are healthy if you have internet connection if you are able to hear this message that means your ears are working that means you have internet connectivity that means you can see these are things that you can give god thanks for you may be worrying about the things that you are praying about but you already have so much to give god thanks for friends it could be as simple as thanking god for a restful sleep for a roof over your head for the love of family and friends whatever it is psalm 107 and verse 1 urges us to give thanks to the lord for he is good his love endures forever so acknowledging even the smallest blessings will foster a spirit of gratitude inviting god's presence into your day is something that can change how your day ends your day may begin rough but it can end with a blessing ask god to guide your thoughts your words and your actions psalm 5 and verse 3 says in the morning lord you hear my voice in the morning i lay my requests before you and wait expectantly so start the day with god's presence ask him for what you want but then wait expectantly expect things to happen expect good things to happen you have to think positively and speak positively over your situation and over your day consistently starting the day like this with gratitude and god's presence will indeed strengthen your faith and we become more aware of his companionship and his provision when he answers our prayers gratitude transforms our attitude 
So if you have a miserable boss, if you have trouble at home, if you have a relationship that is going sour, if you have things that are just not going your way, instead of focusing on all the things that are going downhill, focus on all the things that God has done for you and then you trust him to continue to work things out in your favor. By focusing on God's blessings, we become more positive, we become more resilient, and we become better equipped to handle the challenges we face with grace. Spending time with God each morning deepens our relationship with Him. So as we get into our prayer today, I want us to remember that as we draw near to God, He will draw near to us. Align our hearts with God's will each morning and it will help us to live with a greater sense of purpose and direction. We are always reminded that our lives are a part of a bigger divine plan and this perspective will give us motivation, clarity and encouragement to go through our day, to trust God to work things out and to rebuke the attacks of the enemy. So friends, by thanking God, we recognize that he is still in control. We recognize his power. We look at all his creation around us, the birds of the air, the clouds, the trees, the oceans, and we know that he is still working. He is still active. He is still here. When we see the butterflies passing our face, when we feel the wind blowing in the air, we know that the Lord is still alive and he is still well. So friends, dedicating the first part of your day to God through prayer, reflection and gratitude, it will align our hearts with his, it will strengthen our faith, it will improve our attitude, it will deepen our relationship with him and it will enhance our sense of purpose as he opens doors for us and guides us to all the blessings that he has already prepared for us. The enemy will come to steal, kill and destroy. He wants to attack your plans, your family, your business, your pocket, your health. But let us commit to beginning each day in the presence of our Heavenly Father, thanking Him for His countless blessings and seeking His guidance for the day ahead. As we do this and as we pray, we will experience the profound joy and peace that comes from walking closely with God and acknowledging His goodness, His mercy and His blessings as soon as we wake up each morning. So as we begin to get into our prayer, I want each person to reflect on something that the Lord has done for you before. Think about his goodness. Don't focus on your problems. The Lord is able to take care of every issue that you will ever face as long as you put him first and let go of the grip that you have over the situation. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly far more than you could even ask or imagine. So whatever you can do in a year, God can do it in a day. Do not worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. As we pray together, let us trust God to take the burdens off our shoulders and open the doors that he has in store for us that will take us from A to B, from nothing to something, from sickness to healing, from poor to rich, from unemployed to employed, from single to married. He is able to change it, he is able to turn it around, and you don't have to worry as long as you put God first and remember him in the good times and the bad times. So as we get into our prayer for today, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, take a moment and click on that subscribe button as we get into our prayer for today. Dear Heavenly Father, today we come before you with hearts of gratitude. We thank you for everything that you have done for us, all the things that we forgot about over the years. And we thank you for life and for helping us to make it to this point in our day. We acknowledge your greatness and we give thanks for your boundless love, even though we mess up from time to time. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, 
Lord, for each person listening to this message today, we ask that you grant them a blessing today. We ask that you share with them your guidance, share with them your plan for them, help them to see your purpose and to walk in your will as they go through their day. Lord, you are the creator of all things, the giver of life and the sustainer of our souls. Lord, for the countless blessings you have poured into our lives, we take a moment right now and we just say thank you. Lord, we thank you for the constant presence. In moments of joy, when things are going our way, you are there. And in times of struggle, you are our refuge and our rock. We thank you for the strength you provide. We thank you for the unfailing promises and for your mercy that renews us each morning. We are humbled by your faithfulness, even when we fall short, even when we mess up, even when we say we won't do this again. Sometimes we mess up and we don't even realize. But Lord, as we step into this new day, we ask for your divine guidance. We ask you to direct our steps and help us to walk in your will. Grant us the wisdom from heaven to make decisions that honor you and decisions that will outclass everything that is around us that seeks to put us down. We ask you to tear down any plan or attack of the enemy against our lives, against our health, against our future. And Lord, we ask you for your abundant blessings to flow into every area of our lives. Bless our homes with peace. Bless our lives and our families. Bless our relationships with understanding and compassion. Bless our plans, our businesses, our endeavors with success and fulfillment in the name of Jesus. We pray for your provision to meet every need, for your grace is able to overcome every challenge. Lord, for each person that is listening to this, you know which country they are from. You see them under their roof right now on their journey to work, at their desk at work, as they are commuting. Lord, we ask you to touch them. We ask you to protect them. We ask you to guard their minds, whatever they may be going through. If they are young, if they are senior, if they are rich, if they are poor, Lord, you know their situation and you know how to make a way for them. Whatever they are going through, if they have a difficult situation with their manager, if they have a difficult situation in their relationship, at school, or even on the street, we ask you for your intervention right now, Holy Spirit. We ask that you touch them and show them that you are walking next to them. Whatever it is that this person is going through, if they need healing in their body, if they need a breakthrough in their pocket, if they need an answer about something they have been praying about, Help them to know that they are not alone and the enemy will have no dominion over their minds or over their future. We ask you to open a door for them today. Guide them and guide their family. Guide them to see you and to see the blessings and the rewards when they put you first and trust you with their future. Lord, we come before you and we thank you for all that you have done. Lord, we thank you for people who have gone through things and you have blessed them and taken them out. We thank you for all you have done and we believe and trust in you for open doors and divine opportunities. You know the desires of our hearts. You know the dreams that we hold dear. We pray that you open doors that no man can shut and close doors that are not in line with your will. Provide us with opportunities to grow. Even if our manager or our situation tries to hold us down, we declare and decree that we will break above it because of the power and the favor of the Holy Spirit today. Lord, help us to serve and to make a difference in this world. Help us to recognize and seize the opportunities with faith and courage even when we want to feel timid and afraid. Lord, we seek your favor today. Surround us with your favor as a shield and let it be evident in everything that we do. Grant us this favor in everything that we encounter today, in our workplaces, in our schools, in our communities and in our families. Let your favor open the doors of opportunity and bring about divine connections, 
bring about divine favor in our transactions in our communications in our workplace in our business and in our lives lord we thank you for hearing our prayers we trust in your perfect timing today as we know that all things will work out together for the good of those who love the lord as we go through this day may we carry your peace may we reflect on your love and may we glorify your name in all that we do in jesus name we pray amen if you've made it to the end of this prayer please remember to click on the thumbs up if you enjoy this message and if you feel led in your heart to support us to make these videos every day please do so by clicking on the first link in the description below thank you so much for watching and for listening and we hope you have a great and blessed rest of your day.